Howdy, howdy. Welcome back to my channel. I'm building out my Expedition Camper. We're on to video number 57 of this build series, and that is some more spin welding and testing of water tanks and getting ready to install them. And camper building continues with another water tank. I have four fresh water tanks, and part of the reason why is because the two larger ones that are in each of the bench seats couldn't quite I couldn't quite get the size I wanted and I could fit two more at the base of the cabinets because I decided to add a toe kick in the base cabinets which raised them up about five inches. So I have here my 4.75 inch tall water tanks that are gonna go underneath each of the cabinets. So at the base of those, so I get a little bit more capacity. I have to drill in one more, one more spin weld fitting. And I'm gonna put that here at the front so I can have a nice pass over between the two sides, the left and right side. I'm actually gonna have two pass overs one berth in the middle between the two tanks and one at the front of the two tanks. So it really no matter how parked as far as the level goes, that water will equalize between the two sides and always the, the water pump, the fresh water pressure pump will always be able to pull from each one. So I do have a little bit of a challenge with these tanks in that they're really not 4.75 inches thick. Matter of fact, it's more like about six inches. And uh, if I get a tank measure out, let's do that. Let me show you. All right, here we go, ready? Let's start on this side. Now, I don't know if you can see that very well, but that, exactly. It's actually over six inches. We're all the way up to, at this point, at the bulbous convex point, we're right about at six inches right there. Six inches, it's crazy, right? That this is that much thicker. Now, Grant's got this massive convex bulb here, right? And if we really measure right down to the edge, we're just over 4.75 inches. So I will take their measurement as being valid, but nonetheless, it is definitely a little bit frustrating that it's nowhere near close to the 4.75 inches with that big bulb. And so I'm going to have to actually compress that bulb with the cabinetry. Fortunately, I've got this nice aluminum cabinetry framing that I'll be able to pull off pressure and be able to compress that down. That will not be a problem. It really blew up quite a bit during the manufacturing process. I thought that expansion would settle down a lot once I put some holes in to let air out, which usually happens with these freshwater tanks. They're usually made down at about sea level. I live up about a mile high in elevation, so thought that pressure would let out, but it obviously did not let out enough. So here I, I just received some more three quarter inch spin on weld fittings. I had to buy a couple more. Unfortunately, I was down to my last one. I could have put a quarter inch fitting here, would have been, excuse me, a half inch fitting in here, which I have, it would have been perfectly fine. My freshwater pump can only, the pressure pumps only are half inch input anyways. All of the fixtures within the camper are half inch or less as far as their input into those for their supply. So really that would have been perfectly fine. You'd be that many tanks even if the pressure pump was drawing a little bit more than a half inch could supply it, it would all equalize out after the pressure pump stopped running a few minutes later at the most from a shower or something. Nonetheless, I'm going to put this down roughly, not quite in the corner, because I've got some metal framing that's going to go in this corner, and I'm going to put it though as close as I can to this edge, and I'm going to circle the inside. That is where my spin wheel fitting is going to go. Then... I take my drill bit with the appropriate size. Let's double check, make sure that these spindle things are the same. They are. So I'm gonna take this. And by the way, all these details are in my spin weld fitting slash freshwater tank video that I did quite a while back. But I'm just gonna go through a quick run through right now of this. Let's get to redo this. I'm gonna hold this tight in between my legs here. It's not the most appropriate place, but just to hold it because I've got a water tank fitting on the other side, make it a little wobbly. Voila, there we go. So I'm gonna go pull this plug out. And we're gonna spin weld this baby on. All right, things are getting a little packed here in the workshop, so it's not gonna be the best shot of this, but it should be good enough. So I'm gonna take my spin weld fitting, I'm gonna put in my fixture that I have here in my router, and I'm gonna go ahead and, well, let's, let's get this on there, in there, make sure it's in there good. Okay, now let's get the fixture on with the router on it. Okay, that's now on. So this is the trickery part. There's <sighs> always a little trickery to everything. One is my water tank's a little wobbly because I have a tank fitting on the other end. And 
and make sure they're all in the right place after I already drilled the hole. Yes, I checked that before. One of the challenges with spin welding these on with the router is that I really don't have any gap under there to really see what's going on. If I lower the bit down some, the router can get a little bit wobbly. So I have to hold it pretty steady. It spins up very quickly. This stuff melts into place or spin welds within about two to three seconds. And I found that in about two seconds is adequate. I went ahead and pressure tested my other one. It was fine after about two seconds of this but it starts smoking up after about a second or so, so it gets hard to see it. And it's hard to see in there, into the router, and not only that, but if I have the open end towards me, I get hot plastic bits shoot me in the face. And already, like, kind of burned, you might be able to see some burn marks, small, small little burn pox on my arms from spin welding the fittings on the other tank the other day. So I tend to turn it away from me, have the, the plastic window that you can see right here, instead protecting me from those plastic bits but then the problem is I can't really see it because it starts getting smoked up and so it's hard to get in there and see it and see if it's really melting on and also because I'm putting them as close to the bottom as possible in these tanks it's a lot thicker on the bottom because I'm overlapping the bottom there with the the base of the spin weld fitting the flange on it that actually welds on and so I have to put a little more pressure down I've, I've noticed into that side so here's my trick and I've also slowed down the speed on this so just a little bit and I think the slower speed should help. It could make it worse. I'm hoping it's actually gonna help. And so we'll see. Let's hope, let's hope. There we go. I only have one more of these fittings if I don't get it right. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. And yes, I got plastic bits sprayed on me and my, even on my legs. So my arms are still stuck to my arms here. I can't even get it off, but that is a beautiful fitting. Look at that fitting. As I'm breathing in plastic dust, you've got a nice weld there. It's nice and flush, right? So it is on there good. That is definitely going to pass a leak test. But I don't know if you can see, I got a little white pox on me right here. And this light, this white plastic, it's, it's kind of stuck on me. There we go. I don't know if you can really tell, but I've got lots of little red marks now on my arm from the burns of this plastic. It's part of the reason why I've always suggested wear long sleeves and long pants. I didn't want to today. Convenience, so whew. let's go get this thing water tested. It's one of the great things about spin welding is that pretty much this is good to go within a minute after doing it. It's already cooled down. I can touch it now. So it is on there. I can put some caps on it. It's solid. It's not going to move anywhere, just like any other, I guess, welding process. And so I'm going to put some caps on and fill this baby up with water, actually at pressure. And I'm going to fill it up with at pressure and test all the fittings. I'm going to turn the tank in all directions. So it essentially forces any water into every one of these fittings to make sure they're all in there really good. So that went really well. I do think that the router needed to be a little bit faster, but that little bit extra time really got it welded in there very nicely. Let's go pressure test this baby out. All right, campers, what do you do when a spin weld fitting doesn't go well? That's what happened to me here. One spin weld fitting out of the roughly 12, the dozen that I put on, did not seal up well. It got a little bit wobbly. This is one of the challenges with the half inch ones because my driver is, I have it on a, an angle grinder. And it's just because of the fitting attachment that's here and what I could fit it in easily without having to modify something up for my router or something else. So here's what I gotta do. I just have to go ahead and basically take a blade here, a thin razor blade, carefully of course, without cutting myself or digging into the tank, which is the challenging part, and just try to cut around. This one's a tough one because of the way it's really well welded on this one side, which sucks, but not on the other. Like I said, it got in wobbly. So I've got enough cut there. Now you can pry that off. Look at that. See that came off really nice and cleanly, fortunately. Now the question is, it came off so cleanly, do I just go ahead and take the risk and re-weld with the same fitting? Or do I pop a new fitting on there? Know what you're saying? Ah, definitely use a new one. And you're right, I probably should. Particularly because I have no use 
for another fitting at the moment. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say this is my backup. Start with a brand new fresh one. So let's go get a nice fresh one. I'm going to spin this weld, weld this one on and hopefully get it right this time. Before I do that, I'm also going to kind of just clean up these edges a little bit to make sure that I've got a good clean edge and smooth round surface here to put this in. So let's go take care of that. Okay, you know me. Make sure we got our safety gear on. Uh, gloves, glasses in this case for certain. I really should have long sleeve shirts on. I still got some burn marks from that last one. And I'm probably going to get some of this one, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm most in a pretty safe area, meaning I'm not going to have any plastic bits that are going to get on anything that's going to matter. And this is going to be a little bit tricky. How do I come in here on this one? I really prefer to hold it like this. So I think I'm going to do that. I don't have my best working space here, but it will work. Let's hope this goes well. So on this bit, this spin weld fitting bit, slash adapter slash holder it's pretty tricky getting these spin wheel fittings in there it's part of the issue with these half inch ones you really got to push them down in there hard okay so what i've got to do is make sure i'm holding this really flat and smooth and level and really pushing it level which is hard to do because i got this big lever sticking out here where my arm is where the handle is the the power switch and i'm going to get kind of close to my face so i can really see it and my arm's pretty close. Let's see if we can do something to cover up that arm. Ta-da! Here's what we're gonna do. Okay? I'm going to put a towel here without obscuring my view, my vision, but I think that's gonna help protect my arm, keep some of these bits from coming up on there. And if they do, I'm just gonna have to hang in there and go with it. Here we go. Okay, I did something that really you probably shouldn't do, but that's I stopped part of the way through because it looked like it was good, and I think it was good, but I stopped part of the way through and quickly reassessed when I saw it slow down or come to a stop that I felt like it should go on a little bit longer, and fortunately I was able to continue to power through that because it was still liquid enough. It hadn't solidified up because it does solidify within a second or so, and I was able to get down, so now it's much more flush and flat. It looks really good all the way around. I'm just letting it cool off and solidify, particularly this bit because it really holds on to that spin weld fitting. There's a lot of friction on there. So I want to make sure it's dry and I just kind of want to wobble that off and, uh, and test it out. It looks great. It looks like that is going to be a good watertight fitting. So hopefully that is. Let's put this down. Let's go test this out. So I went ahead and filled these tanks up with water and then tested them to over 60 PSI at pressure, completely full, and both these smaller tanks held. So I know that they're gonna be watertight, so these spin welding fittings are solid. So now it's time to go ahead and get these tanks, these small water tanks installed into the toe kick at the base of these cabinets, which I'm gonna do in my next video. If this is helpful to you, please do like and subscribe to my channel. So much more coming up.